Good afternoon. Can you hear me? If you can hear me, please have one. Okay. <clears throat> I think you can also see me and you can also see the screen, right? I'm sharing the screen with you. How about that? Okay, good. Uh, okay. Okay. This is class 11, right? Is it 11 that we're having today? Is it class 11 that we're having? Hello? 11, right? Okay. So I'm going to record the class and I'm going to say Dr. Sam and class 11 and we are being recorded as usual okay so what is it that we're having today we're having the dubliners we're finishing off the dubliners so that we can start something else next time inshallah <coughs> okay so the dubliners this is irish literature like we agreed we're um, now far away from mainstream english literature with uh, mainstream English literature, we did uh, a number of novels. We did, uh, the last one was the uh, Beach of Halisa, and before it, it was the Sign of the Four, and before it or prior to it, there was um, Emily Pronte's um, Wuthering Heights. Okay, so Irish literature. So it's, um, we spoke enough about the movement from one culture to another, from moving from mainstream English literature to, uh, uh, you know, Irish literature, moving from the 19th century, the Victorian age with its ideas uh, and ideals to the 21st uh, century or the early 20th, uh, first 21st uh, century with, with also with its, uh, uh, did I say the 21st century? No, I, <laughs> I mean the 20th century with its also uh, ideas. Okay, so the ideas do not obviously meet uh, eye to eye. There is a great deal of change. There is a great deal of change of perspective. Um, and the concerns are also different, like we agreed, right? So I'm not going to revisit uh, these areas again because we, we've been talking about them for quite some time and you, and you can always go back to the recordings, the previous recordings for details on, on and about them. Uh, my concern today would be with the uh, the last leg on, on this long journey that we call the Dubliners. Um, and we said that we're highly selective when it comes to the short stories that uh, that are included in the big uh, collection of short stories that is called uh, the Dubliners, right? Um, so far, we did the Sisters, an Encounter, Eveline, Clay. Uh, w w w we started Clay. We're uh, going to talk about it more and and then we'll uh, move to a painful case and we're concluding uh, the whole efforts uh, when uh, the death right um, <coughs> so you 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 talk about these or you explore these uh, short stories with a background and we spoke about that in the background the background of the age in, in which they were written spoke also about the writer because there is a great deal of autobiography in what we're seeing 
uh, some of the characters are considered mouth pieces and they they uh, kind of represent um, you know the viewpoints of um, of uh, Joyce they reflect his viewpoints and they also uh, uh, kind of represent his experience as an Irish an Irish who lives on the continent but he has his mind uh, and heart set on Ireland and on Dublin where he he originally uh, hails from right um, again we're talking about alienation we're talking about uh, the sense of paralysis that permeates the, the these different short stories uh, we're talking about failure at one point we're talking about the the plight of women okay this typical woman scenario where women are put at a disadvantage um, right and they normally compromise their quality of life they they compromise a great deal in order to make everybody else happy and this is being repeated here in the different short stories we also spoke about the project that he has uh, the project that the project that Joyce uh, or James Joyce has and we said that he is um, if not uh, the most intentional writers he is one of them he is one he is very intentional in what he says uh, and w in what he project uh, projects so and he he says it more often than not that I have a project and the uh, short stories that we're having are a uh, part of this project you you read them within the parameters that Jim Joyce himself sets and what are those parameters as detected as as kind of um, known uh, through and by him because he said it at one point and also three through our detection when we de we read the short stories and we detect you know commonalities and patterns um, let's first of all talk about the project that he has he said that I'm presenting um, Ireland and by extension Dublin or the other way around I'm, I'm presenting Dublin as um, more or less like a human being in and uh, through its different stages of development and growth uh, typical of human beings in Dublin goes through those known stages you have childhood the childhood stage you have the adolescence ch uh, stage you move to the maturity stage and you end up with what he calls public life okay when you look at the, the, the different short stories you see that they in their progression they fulfill this pattern they meet and fit uh, the, this pattern that he is uh, having in mind okay um, another thing that uh, that is very clear and, and this is something that he didn't say but you can almost detect from the short stories uh, it is this focus on you know um, I would say minorities I would say that people who are not normally uh, given space and voice um, and they happen to be the most influential uh, perhaps later we're talking about children the young generation in general whether we're talking about children and boys and girls and whether we're talking about you know girls and women and it seems that Joyce is saying these people should be given some space these people are whether they are, they are children or uh, young women and young boys are the future of Ireland uh, they are I mean he has this forward looking vision about the future he's not he doesn't have qualms uh, about the past and uh, he doesn't have this uh, he's not putting the, the 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 past on a pedestal like everybody else 
he believes he is a man of the future and he wants Ireland and Dublin to look forward not to go backwards uh, remember this was a time when there was a great deal of talk about uh, what they call the Celtic revival Celtic revival means uh, the uh, the Irish said that in order for us to uh, move forward we have to go backwards we have to which is very contradictory of course we need to go all the way back to our uh, culture original culture we need to go back to our uh, original language and our history so that we can get the fuel necessary and needed for us to uh, to be uh, uh, perhaps propelled forward um, and uh, it doesn't seem that Joyce was in total agreement with that he said that uh, getting yourself entangled in the past is not going to uh, get you uh, yes uh, Ustaz is saying Celtic revival yes uh, uh, getting yourself entangled in the past is not going to get you uh, any way ahead so he was um, not subscribing to what I um, mean writers uh, at the time uh, doing they were like I said they, when they write plays and and even novels and poems it's all um, you know related or linked to to their past and the inspiration is back there with Irish mythology he said this is fine and everything but we have to have our eyes set on the future rather than uh, in, in, uh, in the past or on the past uh, and in order to do that you're going to see a great deal of conflict um, and clashes of ideas within his uh, different short stories and even with the with his novels it's, it's this conflict and this clash between the old generation with its old ideas and the young generation um, um, whose voice is for the most part not heard okay so again um, Dubliners uh, with its different sh short stories uh, are uh, perhaps Joyce's statement against uh, those who try to um, keep uh, you know keep thinking of the past uh, keep looking backwards and not uh, looking forward he said that people are so set in their old ways and that's perhaps the reason why uh, Dublin has fallen behind uh, Dublin at the time is not London uh, is not Paris it has fallen behind in a lot of uh, aspects in the different aspects of life um, whether you're talking about development whether we're talking about progress and prosperity or even when you talk about music in one of the instances here as we're going to see in, in, in the dead the different members uh, of the uh, the household and they are having like a party and they are uh, reflecting on uh, what somebody uh, um, described as the happy old days when he spoke about Ireland and the Irish music as being one of the best music in Europe but he's saying that this is no more and they kept uh, lamenting uh, the sad state of uh, uh, affairs and when it comes to music and this of course would be extended to the other aspects of life okay so like I said these are the ideas that you need to keep in mind while skimming through the short stories okay uh, again the, uh, the there is an intentional part an intentional part to it uh, and he has uh, said it and Joyce has said it and the other part is something that you de you detect and the patterns that you can see that you see repeated you yourself have to uh, pick out uh, again his project his intentional project would be uh, depicting uh, um, sorry uh, Dublin in its different uh, stages of development this is intentional and uh, the, the the part that you're supposed to detect ha has to do uh, <coughs> uh, with, with
with the uh, idea uh, the ideas that we spoke about uh, the different ideas that uh, get uh, repeated as we proceed okay um, so where did we stop we stopped with clay if you still remember so clay uh, and I'll talk about clay a painful case and the dead and perhaps if we have time we can go backwards and and put all of them in uh, in its uh, overall uh, you know it, it's, it's an image uh, that we're trying to or a, a painting that we're trying to portray so with every sh short story being part of this uh, picture so when we have finished all the short stories that we have we can look back on the overall picture and see its different elements and parts okay so clay um, I uh, assume and I trust that you have red clay right so have you read clay remember one reason why uh, perhaps we didn't proceed was because you guys didn't read any of the short stories and you said that you, you were under the impression that we're doing something else right so clay right so clay everyone so if you have read clay uh, please say something uh, perhaps type one <coughs> yes and we also spoke about Dublin we're, we're finishing everything today so that we can start um, a new thing we're starting a play next time so um, okay so clay and a painful case okay so clay in very simple terms what's the storyline what is happening in clay if any I remember n n not much happens in those kinds of short stories right these are perhaps uh, short stories of ideas the focus would be on on ideas right so you w you wouldn't expect um, as much uh, perhaps uh, action as you have seen in mainstream English novels for example right so what's happening in clay what is the storyline what's the plot in 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 a sentence who is doing what uh, we have a protagonist right a lady that is of course not young right we're talking about perhaps a middle-aged lady and this is very significant as you know and she is Ah, uh, Maria her name is Maria like Marwa is saying she works in um, um, I don't know how to it's, it's a house that is uh, meant to perhaps uh, receive uh, I mean women who at one point in their history did something wrong or they are old it's a nursery house for old people right and she works there and um, what else um, w we're talking about an occasion uh, perhaps uh, a celebra a national celebration of a sort uh, and we're having a day in her life and it's uh, typical of short stories where we don't have so many days this is what we call perhaps the unity of time in the greek sense where uh, everything happens in a day or two right so uh, maria uh, does her work in the morning and she is um, setting her agenda up so that she can go and visit um, friends or a family uh, in the afternoon or in the evening so the family or the 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 head of the household of this family happens to be uh, um, one of those kids that she used to kind of uh, take care of professionally at one point uh, at one point she th this was her job she was his nanny or something and now 
he uh, grew up and he has a family of his own and on on occasions on on certain occasions she has to go all the way to his house and they um, get together and celebrate and uh, they perhaps have a nice evening and this is what she is exactly doing she um she leaves work and she goes out in order to shop for for food and other delicacies for for the family that she's visiting and she's going to take uh, the tram uh, or tram all the way to the house um, on the way and while she was on the tr uh, tram she met a gentleman and they started to talk and uh, obviously they were kind of carried there was this chemistry between them if if you like and they got carried away in the conversation and when she left the tram uh, she left uh, one of the gifts the cake that she was having for the family when she goes there and they start to kind of exchange uh, you know greetings and she spent a nice time when it was time for the gifts of course she will discover that one uh, of the gifts has or had been left behind in the tram. She feels very sad and miserable and they kept calming her down and everything. Uh, at one point they would play a game, a game of uh, perhaps that would tell uh, people uh, about their destinies and what, ha what perhaps uh, will happen to them in the next couple of years or, or so. Um, and it, uh, the game is uh, simply about you know choosing and uh, you you get uh, blindfolded uh, and then you have to choose from a number of things you would choose a bible you would choose a clay you would cho i don't know about the other choices um and maria was part of the game she played the game and she she chose a clay uh, when you interpret the clay uh, according to the game the the, the, the clay is an indication uh, and is uh, perhaps uh, it's a bad omen because it uh, tells uh, those who play that uh, the chooser is not going to live long enough um, she obviously everybody was kind of was in shock and uh, she was given the opportunity to uh, one uh, to to uh, try her luck one more time and when she did she i think she picked up bible which is an indication that she has to go and live she will uh, ha have to go uh, ha have to go and live in uh, perhaps um, what do they call it it's uh, this place where nuns uh, go to and they spend the rest of their life over there so these are the two choices that she made uh, if we can call them choices you cannot choose a uh, blindfolded of course uh, uh, and they indicate a great deal uh, as we're going to this is the story in a nutshell uh, let's go to the uh, analysis part let's talk about the uh, uh, whatever caught your eye when you read the short story in terms of symbols in terms of ideas um, like I said you need to always connect the dots you need to connect whatever you read uh, to uh, whatever you have heard or read about the age about Ireland about Jim Joyce himself even about your experience with the previous short stories so how can you do that uh, did you make those connections and did you come up with something this is my question to you <coughs> okay do we have abir today abir julia uh, we have fat and uh, who else sara el hariri uh, I'm, not, uh, <laughs> I'm obviously confusing courses i'm sorry uh, we don't have heba here uh, we have Sara, of course, we have Kamar, right? We have, I think we have no fear, yes, al -Ustaz. and Fat, yes. Okay, 
so can we say something the stars uh, clay talks about a beautiful girl Marianne yeah w um, uh, she she is neither um, uh, beautiful nor a girl um, not not a girl in 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 terms of age she is uh, way older than a girl um, Ustaz and um, we don't have any indication that she was beautiful um, okay so um, I don't want you to talk about the storyline because I have already uh, spoken about that I w uh, w we're analyzing the short story now so if you have some analysis to uh, to give just go ahead uh, like I said you can always connect the short story to uh, the age to uh, what you know about Dublin to the ideas that we spoke about to James Joyce himself right so um, if you connect the short story if you think of the short story against the other short stories the uh, short stories that we have spoken about in Dubliners what are you going to say this is my question um, mm -hmm, mm. Um, <coughs> you may want to, to use the mic if you want to use the mic just go ahead whether um, you know, Kamar, Nuf, um, who else? Sara, Sara Al Hariri. Mm -hmm. mm, I'm not in luck today. Nobody is trying to say anything. Uh, Maria and Evelyn both are unmarried. Okay. The matron tried to prepare an intimate family by some games. What's that? Okay. This is taken as is from perhaps Cliff Notes or uh, I don't know from where you're getting that, Ya Abdul Rahman. Hmm. Um, the issue is that I don't want to end up saying everything we have you guys have experience enough in um, you know coming up with thoughts and ideas I guess Maria here does not face the big consequences and what are those big consequences here Marwa So how different is Maria from the other female characters that we have seen so far in Eveline, in the sisters? How different? Is she different? Is she any different? <coughs> no, she is not, right? Um, Kamar is saying while Eveline is young, Maria is not and her youth is already gone. Yeah, that's a good conclusion. Yes. So uh, again, the focus is also on women characters. Okay, the protagonist or the main character is a woman like um, the woman that we have seen in Eveline like the woman that we're going to see in a painful case like the women that we're going to see in the dead so what's this wh what's with this focus on women is it meant by the most intentional of writers joyce absolutely yes um sensitive as he is he is giving them space but uh, within the framework of a culture that wouldn't give them the space that he is giving them. Let me put it this way. Uh, he's giving them space uh, by um, having them, you know, represent the women uh, that uh, and their lot in, in the Irish society at the time. And what was the lot of women in the Irish uh, society of the time where they were they were they given access to um, uh, perhaps good education 
to uh, a good quality of life to equal uh, opportunities no unfortunately no um, the short stories that we have seen and from what we know about the age uh, women were not given much space or scope to fulfill their potential they are expected to do a lot but uh, when it comes to recognizing um, whatever they do um, they, they don't receive any recognition they are so taken for granted and we have the example of Evelyn uh, who has to forgo uh, perhaps uh, the prospects of a life of uh, you know promise um, she has to forgo um, dreams that um, in a girl in, in her position would have in order to stay behind and take care of her brothers and her old uh, father this is the kind of expectations that society has of her. If she does otherwise, she would be uh, perhaps uh, considered bad, uh, you know, nonconformist, and that would allow uh, people to perhaps challenge her, uh, do 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 harm to her, right? Um, so uh, Maria, is Maria any different from the uh, this uh, traditional women roles? No, she is not different. Uh, it is true that we're not given um, enough about her background, how she uh, started her life. But we're um, um, this is uh, or the short story takes place at uh, a very. Uh, at a moment in time in her life where she is already old where she already uh, uh, works in a place that she wouldn't have worked uh, for if she has perhaps better prospects and better opportunity remember she this is what she said uh, obviously she's Catholic and she works in a Protestant uh, place and you know the tensions between both of them so uh, again, to um, for her to come to terms with the, the, the place that she hates. And obviously it's not a, a big job that she's uh, having, right? So um, Maria is no different from the gallery of female characters that uh, we normally see in short stories. Um, by James Joyce again she is a representation of women in Ireland in Dublin and even everywhere she represents the plight of women always and everywhere taken for granted expected to do much or to do too much for so little no recognition of any sort right <coughs> so again uh, with Maria the future the future is very gloomy the future is very um, you know um, is not very bright and the game that they have played is very significant here so choices for women at the time when you do what you're supposed to do uh, supposed to do by the society expects you to do stuff so what are the only chances that you have you either go and become a nun which is obviously not a very beautiful choice at least for us and the other choice uh, would be uh, you know uh, dying, dying, forgotten, and nobody knows about you. In either case, you are alone, like Kamar is saying. You live 
a life of loneliness of solitude solitude that you didn't choose now, sometimes you choose to to be alone but obviously this is not or this was not uh, the choice of women at the time they are they are left to uh, reach this stage of uh, perhaps frustration and loneliness and solitude they uh, over time lose or all contact with people because people wouldn't even I mean you live your life you uh, sacrifice for the other members of the family and then when you get old um, and nobody uh, proposes to you for marriage uh, people would start to frown on you and perhaps describe you uh, um, and give you negative labels and negative descriptions like saying that you are a spinster okay so being a spinster is actually not something that you will not something that you you work for it's only the society that pushes you uh, in this direction by uh, not expecting you to insist on getting married at a certain age insist by uh, by insisting on for example pursuing your dreams okay so you have to sacrifice sacrifice and sacrifice uh, we're not when they're we're not undermining how good she is we know that she is good yeah abdul rahman this is not the point okay um so clay is just another short story another joy short story where uh, women are suppressed where women are so taken for granted where where women are uh, are left with uh, small and very little prospects okay prospects of loneliness okay or death they are left to perish on their own unknown uh, their services are not even recognized right so this is basically what clay is all about again you need uh, uh, to uh, perhaps look at the symbols that the short story has because like I said with short stories you don't have much scope and much space so writers would uh, use symbols so that whatever they can and they the uh, they cannot say in pages because of the limited space they can say it uh, using a symbol you can build uh, a whole scenario uh, out of it um, he wouldn't be able to to put the scenario down on the page for uh, short stories uh, for the limitations imposed by the genre the short story um, let's move to a painful case and it's very painful indeed um, so how much do you still remember about a painful case yes so we're doing now a painful case and we're saying that the title is very significant and very revelatory of what we are in for so painful and case so case would uh, perhaps um, tie down to um, an investigation of a sort could, could be a criminal in investigation or for forensic investigation and painful means that um, we have perhaps a measure of victimization to it so we have victims in, in implicated or involved right so Nof is saying that mr. Duffy Um, is a lonely man who meets 
uh, a woman who softens his harsh character mm, okay so this is uh, so so far so good where is the tragic element or the tragic part you know unless you're um, you're writing something else yeah Fahd is saying Mr. Uh, Duffy gets uh, okay uh, after uh, after ending the relationship um, I wouldn't call her I wouldn't use the description that you're using yeah Fahd describing the lady uh, I think she has a name that you can use right and instead of using this bad word so there was a relationship between Duffy and this lady and after ending the relationship a few years pass and Mrs. Senko is, you see this is her name appears in the papers after uh, being in, a, in an accident right yeah okay ma'am yeah um, it's not uh, yeah w w we're not discussing that L let's uh, let's keep away from this sensitive issue whether because this is going to take away from our uh, perhaps sympathy uh, towards her right we were not talking from uh, our own perspective from our own culture because that would we would end up saying uh, she deserves what happened to her how could she she do that right let's keep away from that let's focus on on the culture for a cu for the irish culture that was okay right and i'm not going to explain further because you understand so let's not keep uh, talking about this part because that again would take away from the stock of sympathy that we were having for her for being a woman, for being a, um, a taken for granted woman, right? Okay. So, uh, Nof is saying once she, let me, she made an intimate move uh, towards him, he cannot continue. He, um, he, I mean, yeah, out out of the this move, he uh, decided not to continue the relationship because he wanted to control everything. I'm not sure that he wanted to control everything. Then he his life his life fell down, or her life fell down. Then she kills herself. Yeah. Okay she commit no she didn't commit suicide we don't know whether she committed suicide she got hit by perhaps a train or something you cannot really know whether she <laughs> she took her own life okay it's it's uh okay so again it's uh, again this is also cultural if you say that she committed suicide that would also take away from you, your stock of sympathies towards her because um, in our culture committing suicide is a bad thing you wouldn't feel sympathetic towards the one who does it so keep away the the idea of infidelity the fact that she she's not being faithful to her husband keep it away and keep also the idea of suicide because again we don't accept that in our culture for we might as well uh, get uh, affected and influenced by that in our assessment uh, uh, and judgment of her right so uh, if you ask me if you ask me I would say that the lady she has all my sympathies of course again um, why why do we have what we're having in the first place remember Remember that the husband was o okay with this kind of relationship. Remember that the husband was away all the time. He, he used to work as a, perhaps a ship captain 
and he used to uh, to be away for uh, perhaps uh, weeks and months right so uh, again if you want to to play this uh, male female game you would find all the justifications for the lady i mean her husband is out uh, enjoying himself whether uh, I mean he travels obviously because he's a ship captain and she is all alone at home right so as as a woman in the Irish society she has little prospects right she doesn't have the um, the uh, perhaps the intimacy that she needs from her husband he's not around uh, she wanted somebody to perhaps keep her company um, and um, uh, perhaps she she uh, um, she stumbled into the the wrong guy because w when you get to know about mr duffy you know that he is very systematic He's very organized, he's detail-oriented, right? He is even self-righteous. Self-righteous means that he has his own system of, of belief and system of values. If you follow them, you're fine. If, if, if you don't follow them in any of its details, I mean, you are exed by him, you are uh, frowned upon you're not accepted into his realm of discipline of organization and all these kinds of things right and obviously uh, uh, and obviously miss mm, say what's her names Senkuan uh, didn't didn't get the message clear. She uh, she is uh, she's obviously a, a liberal-minded I mean lady who goes to uh, to the cinema and watch movies and stuff. And uh, Mr. Duffy is very conservative is uh you know he doesn't have this open mindedness okay so the the, the last i mean the next thing you know is that there is going to be a break the relationship is going to break down and uh, i mean they they move their ways and then after a number of years he he knows uh, he gets to know through uh, perhaps the newspaper that she got killed. Uh, I think it was under the uh, under a train or something. He was hit by a train. And when he started to reflect on what uh, happened, he started to kind of blame himself for it. Um, he believes that he he broke her heart. And. Uh, and also, uh, when he remembers the um, what wh what was going on, he also um, uh, has a broken heart because he says that uh, when she was with him, this was the only opportunity or chance for happiness for him. Again, a typical short story where women are involved. A typical short story where. Um, I, I, I'm not going to talk about Mr. Duffy and the relationship. I'm going to talk about the husband part in this kind of relationship. And the fact that the husband, I mean, she feels alone, obviously. So she feels alone. Nothing happens around her. Her husband is away all the time. Uh, there is a great deal that we don't know about. Perhaps her husband is also. I mean, he's not away and he's, uh, um, you know, he doesn't, I mean, we're not, uh, I mean, nobody t told us that he goes to the church and he, 
<laughs> he's praying and every, perhaps he was uh, away and he was having fun and enjoying himself perhaps this is this part is not given to us in the short story but uh, we can always tell so she feels alone she doesn't have the care and the attention and the recognition that she she should have from her own husband right and uh, obviously i mean some some people take it you know lightly they can come to terms with the fact that uh, uh, the husband has uh, pressures, he, he works somewhere else and stuff. And some other people, like this lady, um, couldn't um, tolerate it. And the next thing, uh, you know, is that she is in a relationship. And when she the relationship breaks down, uh, she is obviously frustrated. Uh, we don't know about what happened. We don't know what happens in the gap. The gap. Uh, between the uh, accident the f when when she got hit by the train and uh, her relationship the last day of the relationship with Duffy we don't know wh what happens what other frustrations you know escalated um, to the extent that she decided not decided we don't know <laughs> I shouldn't jump into conclusion that she killed herself right it's not it's not clear whether she did that of her own accord, killing herself and taking her own life, or she got just hit because perhaps she wasn't stable, uh, um, you know, she was frustrated and all these kinds of things. Uh, perhaps depression, she got depre depressed and depression like Kamar is saying, right? Um, again, uh, women were having and the focus uh, on women is obviously something that we cannot miss right and it's ag it's again um, about paralysis let's let's uh, bring paralysis into the picture so it's paralysis on different levels right and Duffy is paralyzed uh, paralyzed to the extent that he cannot appreciate a pure token of admiration and love. I'm not. I'm not justifying. I'm not saying that what she did is good or bad. I mean, the idea that she approached him or made advances uh, advances on him. I'm just saying that he could have handled it in a, a better way instead of like rebuffing her and and ending up. Uh, the relationship once and for all right with those bad consequences and the tragic consequences that we have now that she uh, got frustrated and stuff um, so again women guys paralysis that we're having Duffy is paralyzed his life system too systematic as it is i mean very boring right nothing happens he goes to the job um he doesn't uh, obviously he's he's not that um uh, kind of people that go goes around and talk to this and that he's not he's not very sociable right and on the other hand we have a paralysis in the life of this lady signs of paralysis would have to do with her husband being away she doesn't find meaning in life she's uh, always uh, perhaps on the search of somebody to communicate with to exchange ideas um, or it doesn't have to be love perhaps she wants somebody to talk to perhaps she wants somebody to uh, uh, somebody uh, perhaps she she wants a listen uh, or listening ears, right? It doesn't have to be a relationship, right? She doesn't have any of that. Her her, her husband is on the move. He's a ship captain, and he doesn't stay around long. Again, women. 
So in a relationship like this, you don't blame the male, obviously. Nobody is blaming Duffy. He is blaming himself. He's uh, partly taking the, the blame, remembering what happened and everything. But if you ask other people, if you, uh, yeah, even us ourselves, we, we wouldn't, we wouldn't blame Duffy, um, right? Uh, perhaps some some people. Uh, he would say um, that he, I mean the, the guy is fine. I mean he put an end to the relationship right fr fr from the very start because he doesn't want commitments. Uh, some people would say ah, this is his character. He doesn't want commitments. Okay. So why why I mean you 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 would automatically say why would he go on in the in the relationship? for some time and even uh, meet her at her house if if he is not committed and if he doesn't want relationships of this type right Kamar, uh, but his reaction is kind of predictable the blessing was too overwhelming he couldn't believe he found someone and overthrew the situation well, this is not what I have read and detected a comer I have read and and I detected um, a selfish individual uh, who obviously took what he wanted and then all of a sudden started to say no I'm not going to play anymore enough is enough Okay, and he uh, perhaps um, yani packed up his tent and, and left, right? Again, I'm stressing the fact that he could have said no right, uh, no, right from the very beginning. But he entertained her. He uh, kind of um, took advantage of her needs. Okay when she wanted to kind of take the relationship to a new level we don't know he said no you, you could have said no right from the very start you know this is typical uh, of <laughs> I am male and I, I don't want to be too harsh on, on men I mean <laughs> you know uh, this is obviously a typical scenario I mean you get something easy I mean you Easy come, easy go, right? Not uh, perhaps calculating the loss that is being uh, accum accumulating. The fact that the lady is going to suffer. Yes. Yeah, he, 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 uh, yeah, he took advantage of her emotional needs. Okay. And because he is selfish, and because he uh, he is not committed, he, he doesn't know how to uh, perhaps, uh, otherwise he could have uh, gotten married, right? Obviously, he, ha he is a failure in his personal uh, life. And he, he have seen that he is in for commitment. Okay, he said no, right? Yes, I hate him too, yeah, Marv. <laughs> okay. Uh, Kamar is saying that he doesn't probably know how to deal with other people because he moved away f from them. Yes. And um, it's not other people uh, who are paying the price heavily, and it, it is this um, lady. Um, okay. It's it's a um, it's a two-way relationship. It's not one-sided relationship. When he met her at the cinema, uh, okay, and they exchanged exchanged looks. If he was serious, if he was um, the self-righteous person that he claims he is, he wouldn't have entertained those uh, thoughts. 
of having a relationship with her, right? So again, I'm stressing the fact that she is more sinned against than sinning. She is not totally to blame for what happened to her. Okay, the, the blame all goes to um, the male, Mr. Duffy. Okay, hi. Um, let's move to the dead. Um, so what do you have to say about the dead? So it is death that we are promised. We are promised death right from the very beginning. Even the title is a contribution to the atmosphere of gloom. The atmosphere of paralysis that we've been talking about in these different short stories. Even the title. Right? Um, remember when I spoke about the circularity, uh, this circularity thing as part of the project uh, of James Joyce. Remember how we started with we, we started with the two sisters, and the two sisters is about um, the death of Father Flynn. So it's death that we have, right? And at the end, so we start with death and we end with death, right? We uh, we have a death case in in the dead and um, part of the action is going to revolve ar around it okay so we're starting with death in the sisters the death and demise of father Flynn and we're ending the short stories with um, the title of a short story the dead and we're having yeah um, we are, we're having death in the short story itself okay so the title is very significant so with the dead the wheel comes full circle this is pointing to the circularity and the singularity of effect that uh, I've been talking about when it comes to short stories. So every short story has a singularity of effect, one single effect that uh, it leaves on you. But with James Joyce and his collection, the singularity of effect um, cuts across the different short stories. Okay, so you have a single effect in the first short story, The Sisters. And this single effect is sustained throughout the different short stories until you have its complete fulfillment in The Dead, uh, which is the last short story. Okay? Um, again, this is the goodbye, the goodbye short story, if you like. So it's going to be a recap. Uh, you're going to have a recap of the ideas that you have seen in the different short stories. Uh, women and their plight and their, uh, their issues. Yes, we have women and their plight and their issues. Yes. Do we have paralysis? Absolutely. Do we have alienation? Absolutely. Okay, whatever you have seen in the previous short stories is being repeat remember i spoke about this pattern kind of i said it's a pattern it's a conscious pattern that gets repeated in every and each short story it's uh, a canvas or a painting where the different short stories are different elements of the uh, uh, of this painting you have to read the collection of short stories uh, with this uh, perspective and this vision that you have a painting and um, you have different elements of uh, 
um, this painting in in the different short every short story contributes something to to this paint are you getting the idea <coughs> again the dead would be uh, a reflection of or a re arab uh, of a wrap up of the ideas that we've been talking about they they are going to to be repeated in one way or, way or another in this short story okay so let's agree on the ideas and then we l let's go to the short story and see whether they are there or not paralysis do we have paralysis absolutely we'll talk about that do we have um Communication uh, break uh, breakdown. Yes, we have communication breakdown. Um, do we have women and issues of women and the idea that they are so taken for granted that we 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 do have that? What other ideas do we have that we've been talking about as far as Jim Choice is concerned? Dublin and what part of Dublin we have in the dead and what is happening to Dublin in the dead uh, whether this short story is a true reflection of of uh, of the Dubliners as a city text or not yes it is uh, yeah like Kamar is saying one of the issues would be uh, um, the gap or the gaps between and among generations and also the clash of ideas between uh, those who believe that Ireland should move forward and those who believe that Ireland should go back I mean go backwards in, in the sense that they have to go all the way to their history and their um, heritage and cul cultural heritage to have uh, the support that and the moral support that they that they need so that they can keep up the fight uh, against the English um, uh, and against the uh, um, yeah against the England the English occupiers so obviously okay so let's talk about the characters and let's talk about what they do and then by way of uh, displaying them we can always talk about the ideas involved yes Nof is uh, is saying something interesting we're going to have this clash between nationalism and internationalism uh, okay so um, as we're going to see that M Mali would represent nationalism while Gabriel would represent internationalism yes that's that's correct so um, Abrahman is saying uh, there is a family reunion or a family meeting uh, where they have a dinner party um, and this is annual it happens every year uh, and they of course they eat and dance and uh, they engage in, in conversations and talk about what happens in Ireland and perhaps what happens outside it, right yeah this is the basic storyline okay let's talk about the characters let's talk about the main character the protagonist if you like So it's Gabriel that we have, right? So what is so special about Gabriel? How how do you read the character of Gabriel? I'm asking you. Okay. So the characters are um, um and Kate and Julia Gabriel Mary Jane Greta Greta is obviously uh, Gabriel, Gabriel's wife right um, 
Lily, Molly. Yeah, you have Lily, you have Molly. And you also have, uh, I think his name is Frank. Frank or Freddy, uh, this, the drunk, this dr drunk, um, Freddy, yes, Freddy, yes. Okay. So, um, the, the party that we're having, the dinner party that we're having, and they are obviously marking, uh, was it Christmas? They, they were marking Christmas. Uh, or the eve of Christmas, I'm not sure. And the dinner was a good opportunity for everybody to uh, kind of talk and out of the conversations and the encounters, uh, conversational encounters that we have, we get to know about the different characters. We, we get to know about the ideas uh, and the clashes, the conflict, uh, the clashes and the intellectual clashes and the political ones that is being circulated uh, um, in Ireland and in Dublin, right? Uh, first of all, um, let's look at the the hosts, the dinner party hosts. They are obviously two uh, old women, right? And they would represent they would represent um, Ireland or the conservative traditional um, side of Ireland. People who insist on observing, uh, I mean, occasions whether those occasions are happy or sad, whether they are religious or otherwise, right? Um, from the revelations you get to know, for example, that they are not... The house may seem perhaps an upper-class house in, in an upper-class area of Dublin, but obviously they have modest means. They are not very rich they still work in their old age one of them is um, you know, perhaps gives uh, music classes and the other i don't know what okay so if you're not financially fine financially okay and you insist on having um a party because you have seen uh, because this runs in in the family but this is an indication that those people are representing the traditional part of the conversation or the argument okay so facing them would be people with liberal thoughts and liberal ideas right uh, one of them happens or on top of them would be uh, Gabriel with his ideas at one point he would even mock uh, you know traditions and and he would be referring to Irish history and Irish, Irish culture as sickening he said he would say that I am sick of that right um, uh, again I said the dinner table uh, would be a very good uh, place for for the exchange of ideas and out of the exchange of ideas we get to know about the different themes that we talk about uh, the, the theme of paralysis is there for example uh, paralysis um, and even the uh, w w remember at one point they were talking about this horse Joni Joni the horse I mean it was uh, perhaps a family horse and how this horse used to react, it was moving in circles. It doesn't move forward. Uh, perhaps it moves backward and in circles, but it doesn't move forward. Okay? And this is um, a telling example of the situation that Dublin was in. It, it's, it's paralysis in uh, uh, its fullest sense. Okay? So paralysis, uh, um, this is Ireland, 
and this is uh, obviously Dublin it doesn't move forward. it's like the horse in Johnny who uh, moves in circle okay so by having an example like this as part of the conversation Jim Choice is also uh, commun communicating a message he's saying yeah uh, obviously the clashes that we're having are um, taking us away from uh, perhaps focusing on getting the job done and the job is looking forward looking for the future and it seems that Jim Choice is saying that Ireland and Dublin and the Dubliners are exactly like uh, Johnny the horse people are moving in circles uh, uh, people are so set in their old ways people are fighting okay and this fighting is obviously diverting their attentions away from bigger projects and bigger visions of Ireland okay so stop moving in circles stop looking backward to your old legacy and your history and your culture and move forward engage with the world embrace the world this is this seems to be the message that Jim Joyce is um, giving or is getting across to the people of Ireland and the Dubliners uh, okay so back to the short story itself um, and part of the the uh, perhaps the entanglement that we have a great deal of contradictions the characters themselves are confused and they are confusing they confuse us as readers uh, look at the character of Gabriel and look at the character uh, of Molly Ivory or Avery Molly right look at the description look at Gabriel and what he represents and what he says he is more into Europe he's more into internationalism okay but he still lashes from time to time he lashes at that he's given as somebody who would embrace um, continental ideas he uh, is interested in learning European languages as opposed to local languages as opposed to uh, his Irish culture but at one point he would even lash out as uh, at Europe so he's self-contradictory right Uh, uh, Ivory Molly or Molly simply or Molly Iv Ivory is also another example she has liberal thoughts okay she has liberal thoughts and th liberal ideas uh, she's a liberal thinking but she believes in this idea of nationalism and uh, at the core of the Irish nationalism, nationalism would be the idea of restoring uh, their heritage and uh, you know, bringing it to life and reviving it their, their cultural heritage and their history and all this so again if you're liberal in your ideas you wouldn't go back all the way back you would move forward so again what is the message that James Joyce is trying to uh, also get across here the message would be that you need to first of all resolve your contradictions you guys are self contradictory you don't know what course of action to take you're not purely liberal and you're not purely conservative and uh, back uh, uh, you know, forward uh, back uh, back in you know looking back uh, or back looking individuals you don't know uh, so you need first of all the starting point for any change would be 
for you to perhaps look into yourself decide where you are uh, and uh, where you are and on which side of the argument you are sitting or standing and then after that you, we can think of change we can think of changing Ireland for the better but but as he sees as he sees it and as he reflects it in the characters of uh, Gabriel and Molly uh, uh, he doesn't he doesn't believe that any change can be hoped for given the fact that people the people themselves don't know um, I mean they, they, they are obviously doing contradictory things they are doing the thing and its opposite okay so clarity of vision is missing it seems that Joyce is saying that unity of purpose is missing this is this also seems to be his message okay are you getting the idea okay so if you don't have a unity of vision if you don't have a clarity of vision or a unity of purpose for obviously you are paralyzed because in this case you wouldn't you are so stuck okay it's like wanting to go forward and go backward at the same time can you do that can you be forward and backward at the same time at the same moment you either move forward or you move backward right you can't have it both ways right uh, this is exactly the situation that the horse Johnny was in so this moving in circles right so this is paralysis in its full sense okay if you're so stuck um, and you cannot move and, and not, not you, it's not that you cannot move uh, it's, it's simply that you want to move forward and backward at the same time so it means that you don't know what moving forward means and what moving backward means so you no know clarity of vision okay so Joyce is simply saying go clear this out have a unity of purpose have a clarity of vision and then uh, uh, yani decide if you have that if you have this clarity of vision the likelihood that you can move with Ireland ahead is high otherwise we're not getting uh, or going anywhere we're going to uh, remain behind the other countries and the other cities okay where else can you see paralysis you can see paralysis in the relationship between uh, Gabriel and Greta we get to know that they they their life is uh, you know stagnant um, the emotional part to it is not uh, it doesn't seem that they are happy together okay um, and the problem with Greta is also that she is so stuck in the past uh, perhaps that that would be a reason enough for her not to uh, perhaps react in a positive way to uh, uh, Gabriel's uh, initiatives she had a lover from the past who who she thinks died for her okay she doesn't want to go beyond and past that she feels obviously she feels so guilt ridden she feels guilty and obviously this sense of guilt is dictating her every move yeah she's hung up to the past like Kamar is saying again she is an important element of the Irish society she is a lady 
she's a woman and she's she she's expected to to contribute right if she is so stuck in the past nothing good will come out of her right uh, uh, perhaps instead of her you know um, sitting with Gabriel and uh, perhaps settling the differences in, in the interest of uh, a better conversation and a better Dublin they I mean everyone has his own island and they never meet they live on their own uh, the uh, islands, uh, islands of their own making. So they are defying the uh, the saying that says no man, and by man we mean men and women, no man is an island. No, every one of them is an island in and of itself. Okay, so they have to come to the realization that it is only through uh, working together, through settling their differences, through uh, clearing out perhaps the misconceptions, uh, um, uh, through um, uh, defining what they really want. It is only through all of this that they can move forward. And with them, um, as Dupliners, w with, their m with them moving forward, you, also, you will also have Dublin moving f forward. But as it stands now, we ha we, I mean, the characters are paralyzed uh, um, in, in their all aspects, in all um, the aspects of life. Okay, so when you look at the gallery of characters that you have in the dead, you will see that every and each one has his own issues. And I'm using the word issues in a negative sense. They, they all have problems. And they all represent uh, the historic problems and the historical problems of Ireland. Right, Freddie, for example, is, is uh, Freddie this guy who is drinking all the time, is a typical representation of um, Irish people, and uh, this may be a, a stereotype, but there is a measure of truth to it. The fact that uh, uh, the issue uh, of um, uh, drunkness is uh, has always been there. The idea of drinking. And with drinking, of course, you would have the idea of perhaps uh, domestic abuse. We haven't seen it in the short stories, but the, um, it's only na natural. If you drink too much, you lose control, and the next thing you know is that you're hitting your wife or child, right? So, like I said, the characters, the different characters represent the different issues. Uh, that Ireland and Dublin has been suffering from all through. One of them would be the idea of drinking too much. The other idea would be the idea of uh, uh, too much nationalism, which would uh, give uh, rise to violence, right? Would be the idea of uh, perhaps uh, looking for solutions outside Ireland, which is also a problem because this way, you have uh, what do they call it you have what we call brain brain drain when all the talents in a country go out of the country so the country is left with no people no skilled uh, individuals right so this idea of brain drain is also a problem uh, and who is representing it here you uh, the, uh, remember you have Frank in uh, in Evelyn. Remember, Frank wanted to travel to Argentina, and he is youthful, and he is um, a young 
man right um, you also have here you have Gabriel having his mind and uh, perhaps his heart set on, 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 on Europe on the continent he wants to learn German um, he, he is having plans to travel instead of uh, visiting his country or different parts of his country Ireland he wants to have uh, to visit the continent to have um, a visit or a trip across Europe so these are issues that we have uh, uh, in 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 the dead and they represent all the uh, the issues that Ireland and Dublin have been um, you know grappling with for years and years okay um, what else uh, I think we're done I mean if we uh, if we talk uh, if we keep talking uh, obviously we're not going to stop because it's uh, pregnant with ideas so many ideas so loaded um, and we're not likely um, uh, of course and the issues of women like uh, Kamari Singh and Lily and uh, the prospects of not getting married and yes okay so with the dead the wheel comes full circle um, when we meet again we're meeting on on what on Thursday right we're meeting on Thursday at six o'clock uh, okay w would we make it would we make it four o'clock would four o'clock on Thursday be better than six o'clock agreed everyone okay so it's Thursday at 4 o'clock uh, inshallah uh, and on this note and with this item I come to the uh, to the end of the class today um, I'll have the video edited and I'll send it to you inshallah